Good afternoon. The uh, next item of business today is a statement by Derek Mackay on provisional outturn 2017-18. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions after a statement, so for those members who wish to ask a question, I'd encourage you to press your request to speak button as soon as possible, and I call on the Cabinet Secretary. Sir, I welcome the opportunity to update Parliament on the provisional budget outturn for the 2017-18 financial year. The provisional figures I'm announcing today are set against a backdrop of unprecedented change in Scotland's fiscal landscape. Scotland Acts and the fiscal framework have fundamentally changed the sources of funding that underpin our spending and introduced significant new devolved financial powers. One example of these changes in the new Scotland Reserve arrangements brought in by the Scotland Act 2016, which is to replace the previous budget exchange mechanism and cash reserve facilities. The new reserve supports the Scottish Government in smoothing all types of spending across financial years, assisting with the management of tax volatility and determining the timing of expenditure. The Scotland Act 2016 also increased our borrowing limits to £450 million a year and we've made full use of this facility in 2017-18. Looking forward, the Scottish Government's first medium-term financial strategy was published on the 31st of May. The MTFS explains the fiscal framework and the funding arrangements that the Scottish Government now operates within, outlines our approach to financial management and fiscal rules, sets out a range of possible funding scenarios for the Scottish Budget over the next five years, and details our key policy priorities and approach to supporting Scotland's economy. The medium-term financial strategy does not provide detailed budget allocations at this stage, and that will form part of the annual budget process. But I have set out in the strategy a responsible approach to financial planning and fiscal rules, which will allow us to invest in the economy and protect essential public services. Alongside the MTFS publication, the Scottish Fiscal Commission uh, published an updated set of economic and fiscal forecasts, which were used to underpin the modelling in the MTFS. Uh, these uh, forecasts show little change uh, from those published by the SFC in February 2018 and as part of the budget bill process. But they do show a downgrading of their income tax forecasts across the period that the MTFS covers. Uh, the new national performance framework has been launched, setting out our vision for a more successful and inclusive Scotland. And the framework was developed following consultation with the public, trade unions, business organisations, local government and civic and voluntary sector organisations, which includes 11 key outcomes that we want to achieve for Scotland. I now turn to the 2017-18 provisional outturn. Under the current devolution settlement, the Scottish Parliament is not permitted to overspend its budget. As a consequence, we have consistently adopted a position of controlling public expenditure to ensure that we live within the budget control limits that apply. I can report that the provisional expenditure outturn for 2017-18 is £30.9 billion against a fiscal budget of £31.4 billion, resulting in an overall cash variance of £453 million. Of this variance, £358 million relates to the fiscal resource expenditure and £84 million to fiscal capital. The remaining £11 million relates to financial transactions funding, which is ring-fenced to meet the costs of loans or equity investment to private entities outside the public sector. I have already notified Parliament of my plans to generate underspends of £235 million to carry forward to 2018-19 as part of the budget approved by Parliament earlier this year. The total variance also includes £100 million allocated to the Scottish Government by HM Treasury one year earlier than expected. And this relates to the new Social Security Agency set-up costs and is carried forward to 2018-19 in full through the Scotland Reserve. Taken together, these items already committed uh, in 2018-19 spending plans account for £335 million of the overall £453 million cash variance. Uh, turning to devolved taxes, I'm pleased to inform Parliament that for the second year running, income has increased. Total provisional income from land and building transaction tax and the Scottish landfill tax is £706 million, £50 million above the initial budget forecast and an increase of £73 million or 12% uh, year on year. The £50 million surplus income from devolved taxes again forms part of the overall 
£453 million variance and will be added to and set aside in the Scotland Reserve. I'm also taking a prudent approach to ensuring that when the government provides guarantees, the annual fees are set aside in the Scotland Reserve as a contingency measure against calls being made on them. In 2017-18, the total was £2 million. So after taking into account the Social Security funding, the planned carry forward for the 2018-19 budget, surplus tax receipts and fees for guarantees, there is then a remaining underspend of £66 million not yet committed to expenditure. This modest sum represents just 0.2% of the overall fiscal budget and will also be carried through the Scotland Reserve and will be available to support management of future budget volatility, a key feature of the new world we live in and with the devolution of the powers set out in the Scotland Acts. Uh, finally, and in addition to the above, there is a provisional non-cash underspend of £123 million. The non-cash budget is used for technical accounting adjustments such as depreciation and impairments uh, that cannot be used to fund public services. This, of course, represents no loss of spending power to the government. Uh, moving on now to Scotland's economic outlook. The potential economic impact of Brexit will be a factor both in the tax revenues likely to be raised in Scotland and in future spending decisions. Uncertainties surrounding what the final Brexit deal will look like and in areas such as future access to EU funding programmes specifically are hampering economic growth and further investment in Scotland. The Scottish Fiscal Commission are clear that Brexit will have a negative impact on the Scottish economy, reducing productivity, trade and migration. And according to all independent forecasters, this Brexit uncertainty is the key factor affecting economic growth forecasts. The pace of growth over the next five years is expected to be below historic trends, with GDP growth between 0.7% and 1.4% in 2018, although this is expected to increase in 2019. However, Scotland leads the way on many key economic indicators, such as the fastest productivity growth in the UK, more informed direct investment in the rest of the UK outside London, uh, growth in research and development spending, and growth in international exports. Scotland also has the highest proportion of employees getting paid at least the living wage and outperforms the rest of the UK on female and youth employment. There's also good news regarding future tax revenues, with the Scottish Fiscal Commission forecasting that land and building transaction tax revenues will be £26 million higher in 2018-19 at £614 million and will increase over the life of the medium-term financial strategy. Scottish landfill tax is forecast to rise next year by £8 million, but will fall over the next five years due to our commitment to move waste from going to landfill to, be, uh, incinerating, to being incinerated. And despite the challenging economic environment, we have infrastructure investment planned for 2018-19 of over £4 billion, supporting 22,000 jobs directly and up to 40,000 in total. An ambitious uh, programme of £20 billion over the lifetime of this Parliament. So we'll use this funding to invest in key infrastructure projects, projects such as £1 billion on city region deals across the country, £340 million of initial capitalisation for the Scottish National Investment Bank, bringing superfast broadband to every home and business by 2021, and a 70% increase in research and development investment. The annual Scottish Government consolidated accounts and a statement of total outturn for the financial year 2017-18 against the final budget for the Scottish Administration as a whole will be provided to the Scottish Parliament later this year. All the figures I am reporting to you today remain provisional as they are subject to change pending completion of the 2017-18 audits. In conclusion, the 2017-18 provisional outturn results show that once again this government has prudently and competently managed Scotland's finances. The prudent management of our 2017 budget and the new financial powers have been delivered against the backdrop of uncertainty around the UK's exit from the EU and the UK government's continued austerity measures. But I commend these uh, figures to Parliament. Thank you very much. And I call uh, Murdo Fraser. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. Today's statement discloses an overall underspend of £453 million. 
Now, the Finance Secretary is, of course, anxious to stress what an insignificant sum this is, but it's worth noting that it is higher than the total cost of setting up a new independent state, according to his own party's <laughs> Growth Commission report. Presiding officer, today the Office of National Statistics advised that the UK deficit for 2017-18 was just 1.9% of GDP, the lowest level since 2001 to 2002, and testament to the success of the UK government's fiscal policy, one which has been opposed at every turn by the SNP, who said it would never work. They have been proved wrong. Moreover, this record at the UK level stands in stark contrast to the situation in Scotland, where the Fiscal Commission have downgraded their forecasts of tax revenues by £1.7 billion over the next four years and by nearly £400 million in the current financial year. Unless the situation improves, this will leave a black hole in the current year's budget, which will require to be filled in the financial year 2021-22. So in that context, the Finance Secretary's decision to transfer £66 billion to the Scotland Reserve against that contingency is a prudent one, but it comes nowhere near filling the gap forecast by the Fiscal Commission. So what additional steps will he take to ensure that his successor in office in three years' time does not have to carry the can for this government's failings? And does he accept that if the economy grew at even the same rate as the rest of the United Kingdom, there would be hundreds of millions of pounds extra to spend this year instead of having to divert resources to fill up reserves as he is having to do? Cabinet Secretary. Can I, can I thank Murdo Fraser for his vote of confidence that at least get through the next three years and the next uh, three, three budgets to continue uh, in office? So I welcome that uh, vote of confidence. It was about the nicest thing Murdo Fraser has ever said um, about me. In relation to the specific questions, in all seriousness, um, we will approach the Fiscal Commission uh, uh, forecast. They will have more data. They will revisit their forecast as we approach the next big uh, fiscal event, being the Scottish budget following the UK Budget. But I think it is right to be uh, prudent with our resources. I do think it is the right thing to do uh, to invest in our reserves. That said, there are limitations around the use of reserves uh, as well. But I think considering the volatility that we all now understand and the constraints within the fiscal framework, that is the right thing to do to ensure that we have reserves to draw upon in the event uh, of forecast errors or any negative uh, uh, effects. Of course, Mr. Fraser also touches upon uh, efforts to stimulate the economy and my budget uh, for this year, 18-19, that's what I've tried to do. There's investment in the economy, such as the 64% uplift in the economy brief and a, and a range of interactions to try and stimulate uh, economic growth. And all forecasters and all economists are pointing to Brexit as the, and Brexit uncertainty as the main challenge to the UK economy and Scotland's economy as well. And of course, the UK government could remedy that by giving us greater certainty on the Brexit question and our uh, respective positions are well rehearsed uh, in that uh, regard. Uh, as to what further measures I'll take, uh, prudent uh, financial planning, uh, ensuring that we have the necessary resources and of course consider what other levers we might require in the future, such as the borrowing powers if required, if there is such a requirement through the fiscal framework in forecast error. Uh, OBR will revisit the forecast, so will SFC, based on the latest data and information, and that should put us in a stronger, more informed position as we approach uh, the next uh, um, budget. Uh, and in relation to the overall um, uh, underspend, uh, in going through the budget process, I was clear on what that underspend uh, would be. There are some matters that came later in the financial year, such as some Barnett consequentials, and then there are other elements of that budget spend that's prudent such as the request by HM Treasury to take the £100 million for Social Security implementation early in the financial year, but not actually spend it until it's required, which would not be the last financial year, but this in future financial years. So I've taken all my decisions in a prudent and balanced way, and I'll continue to do so. James Kelly to be followed by Patrick Harvey. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of the statement. Presiding Officer, the figures announced today in the outturn uh, statement of a £453 million underspend are nothing short of a scandal. The outturn statement represents a gross mismanagement of the budget by Derek Mackay. Mr Mackay, 
It's your job to spend Scotland's budget to support local communities, not to hoard the money in the St Andrews House bank account. It's totally unacceptable that while yards from this parliament, homeless people are sleeping in doorways, nearly £500 million available cash lies dormant in the SNP government slush fund. So, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if he'll apologise to the 30 local communities that have had their libraries closed this year, to the many patients abandoned on waiting lists awaiting hospital treatment, and to the thousands of local government workers who have lost their jobs? Cabinet Secretary. A few, a, a few key points here, I, but I do appreciate James Kelly's uh, attempts to put some colour into the outturn um, uh, report. Uh, un unfortunately for, for Mr Kelly, it's true to say that in terms of the underspend, every penny in terms of this planning uh, that has been carried forward into the next financial year is not lost to Scotland. That was not the case with previous Labour administrations. I would, I would like to ask the handed money back uh, to the Treasury. I'm not handing money back to the Treasury. These are, this is prudent management of our finances and I think the examples that were raised by Mr Kelly were poor choices. In terms of homelessness, there's no underspend in the homelessness budget. In terms of local government, local government got an enhanced uh, settlement. Yes, in part because of the negotiations that other parties very constructively engaged in, the Greens um, specifically. So local government got an improved settlement and the NHS uh, also got uh, an uplift in their uh, settlement, taking it to record amounts. Now, within all of that, I've been very clear uh, in terms of the, the managed uh, underspend, but within that as well, I I'm surprised that even James Kelly didn't welcome the fact that we've collected more in tax than we were forecast to do, and what that's meant is we can apply that to the Scotland Reserve um, as well. But all of this, of course, represents a very strong budget that I got approval for from the Parliament, in sharp contrast to the incoherent, incompetent Labour proposition that you could barely call a budget that unravelled before even Mr Kelly got his feet. We have 11 more questions for this statement. Patrick Harvey to be followed by Willie Rennie. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Given the way the fiscal framework operates, and in particular the tax reconciliation process, I think we need to stop viewing this annual outturn statement as a standalone snapshot of one year in isolation, but it's more about how the picture looks in, in the context of the, the years ahead. Uh, given that, and, the, and the, the Cabinet Secretary's emphasis on tax policy generating more revenue than it had been predicted to, um, we are increasingly, as more use is made of, of devolved tax policy, we're going to have to make sure that we are identifying and mitigating the risk of tax avoidance if we're going to ensure that future annual outturn statements show tax policy generating the revenue that is needed for public services. So what action is the government taking to do that, to identify the risks of tax avoidance uh, and take action to prevent it? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, in relation to those devolved taxes, we require um, Revenue Scotland to do that, and we work closely with Revenue Scotland so to do. Uh, they have particular policies and enforcement action around that and have been very proactive in relation to land about transaction tax and landfill tax. For income tax, we, rel we rely upon HMRC, something that we've discussed at committee, and we have a service level agreement there as well, but we have a general avoidance rule uh, as well, and something I want to see rolled out to uh, non-domestic rates as well, so bringing forward proposals in that regard also. So I absolutely agree with the spirit of what Patrick Harvey has said, we have plans in place uh, to continue to do that, uh, but we do rely on HMRC. Interestingly, of course, SFC's most recent analysis of, of, of their understanding of tax behaviours is that they were pretty accurate in terms of their understanding uh, of, of uh, tax uh, behaviours and I think we have to look very closely at the advice on um, tax behaviours when setting tax policy but enforcement and compliance is absolutely critical. Really ready to be followed by Kate Forbes. Uh, the Fiscal Commission's £1.7 billion downgrade must be causing the Finance Secretary some sleepless nights which is probably why he mentioned the reserve five times in his statement without actually telling us how much is in uh, the reserve. Now I think the Parliament will want to make a judgment as to whether purposefully holding back £235 million is a wise judgment. So can the Finance Secretary tell us how much is in the reserve? 
Mr. Secretary. £192 million pounds unallocated. Thank you very much. Kate Forbes to be followed by Adam Tompkins. And I can say with greater confidence today that I am the PLO to the Cabinet Secretary. There has been much fanfare from the Tories about the £2 billion pound increase to the Scottish Budget. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if he has added any confirmation from the Treasury that this is a net increase funding or might it be offset by cuts elsewhere? Cabinet Secretary. This is further to the question at First Minister's questions on seeing the announcements. Um, I have sought the figures from Treasury. I've got some indication of consequential uh, numbers in relation to NHS spending, but anyone who understands the fiscal framework will also understand how the money is raised is a key factor, and therefore I need to understand how that money is raised, because if it is through income tax that relates to us, then it may not be the £2 billion that's announced. Therefore, I've sought more information from Treasury, so I have not yet got a commitment that is indeed £2 billion net for the National Health Service for Scotland, but I'm continuing to pursue the matter. Adam Tompkins to be followed by Stuart McWillan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary does as if Brexit is the biggest single drag on economic growth in Scotland. But Brexit is, of course, happening to the whole of the UK, not just to Scotland. So why is the Scottish economy continuing to underperform the UK as a whole? Just today, Presiding Officer, this Parliament's Economy Committee said in its new report that in the SNP's Scotland, levels of GDP growth are marginal, productivity is low, and wages are stagnant. How much of that is the Cabinet Secretary going to accept responsibility for? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I mean, we'd have to say the UK government doesn't get to walk away from responsibility for macroeconomic policy. They've conceded the point recently, and after the concession, it would night, and it'd be nice to see some actions on their part as well. I've outlined a range of actions in the medium-term financial strategy and in the government's economic policies of what we want to do to stimulate the economy. And the key matters, not just my opinion, Fraser, Fraser of Allender Institute, Scottish Fiscal Commission, and many others, indeed all others, have said Brexit is a huge issue. In terms of the point, the point around disproportionate impacts and subdued growth in Scotland, it was the oil and gas downturn that in large measure is responsible for some of that around productivity and GDP take as well. And the forward look on productivity, it relates to working age population and participation. And the critical issue within that is ensuring that we have the appropriate uh, numbers of people of working age to be able to contribute by way of, of output and taxation. And that's why migration is so important. So there are many factors in which the UK government can engage. That which the Scottish government is responsible for, we're taking action. So there's a range of factors as to why the UK uh, and Scotland needs to do more around productivity. And we're only seeking the powers so to do. Um, but I am uh, looking forward to further economic forecasts that I think will show an op a more optimistic picture in relation to the economy as the FAI have already done just this week. Stuart McMillan to be followed by Ian Gray. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, can the Cabinet Secretary outline what measures the Scottish Government are taking to provide certainty for our vital public services during the turbulent and uncertain times ahead as a result of leaving the European Union? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we're doing a, a lot of work in terms of a preparation and clearly the Scottish Government's got a very strong position in terms of staying within the single market and the customs union and we're obviously working our own preparedness uh, in relation to that but for me providing both stability, stimulus and sustainability for our public services all go hand in hand to ensure that people can expect the best possible uh, services and what has been and will continue to be a turbulent time until the UK government gets its act together in relation to Brexit. Ian Gray to be followed by John Mason. Thank you. Independent analysis this week shows that, in real terms, the SNP spending on education has fallen by 7.5% since 2010, uh, even when pupil equity funding is included, which is, of course, supposed to be additional to core provisions. So how can the Cabinet Secretary justify hoarding an underspend on this scale when our schools are struggling for resources right now and our teachers are so demoralised by pay erosion that they are considering strike action? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I tried to explain within the figures how, the, the, in terms of that figure I've outlined, that some of it was the planned underspend, some of it was increase in tax revenues, uh, some of it, it was uh, around other matters such as transfers between capital and resource. But within all of that, we have approved budgets that have allocated more to local government, more specifically to education. The most recent figures I have seen has shown that education budgets are up because of the budgets that I've delivered within the Scottish Government, all of, all of, of course, opposed by the, the Labour Party and including 
the three quarters of a billion pounds commitment around tackling the attainment gap as well, also opposed by Ian Gray and his colleagues within the Labour Party. So we're delivering competent, balanced, responsible budgets that will both stimulate our economy and protect our valued public services. John Mason to be followed by Dean Lockhart. Hey, thank you. Um, Mr Kelly and Mr Gray seem to be misunderstanding what underspend means. Um, can the Cabinet Secretary clarify, especially for that £100 million, is that something he's free to spend on anything he wants, or is that very much tied down and effectively ring-fenced by the Treasury? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the, the agreement specifically for the £100 million, of course, that the Labour Party is now asking for me to spend on other things. It'll be interesting to see how we equip a social security agency if the Labour Party want me to spend it on anything but a social security agency. I thought earlier at First Minister's questions, I heard Labour members asking about social security payments. So we need the infrastructure to be able to make the payments as well. So specifically on that £100 million, mm -hmm. Treasury gave the Scottish Government the money early, we carry it over to spend it in the year that it's required to establish the agency. That's prudent, that's responsible, and that's within the agreement that I have with Treasury. And yes, it adds to the underspend number, but I think it very clearly expresses what that purpose was for. Dean Lockhart to be followed by Ivan McKee. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the report published earlier today by the Economy Committee, which uh, looked at the Scottish economy over a six-month inquiry period, uh, concluded that economic growth in Scotland is trailing behind the rest of the UK and historic growth trends in Scotland, and has done so for a decade, well before Brexit and well before the drop in oil prices. Will the Finance Secretary follow the central recommendation of the Economy Committee and revise his economic strategy as a matter of urgency? Cabinet Secretary. I'm sure Dean Lockhart, being the fair man that he is, will give me time to read the report and then reflect upon it. I haven't read it yet, but I will actually read it and I'll then consider its cross-party findings, I, I would imagine. Uh, so, of course, I'll have a look at it and then reflect on our economic policy. I think we're making a range of economic interventions to support and stimulate economic growth, unfortunately, most of which were opposed by the Conservative Party uh, at the last uh, Scottish budget. And when I asked the Conservatives which strategy would you like me to change in the past, it was Mr Lockhart that said remove inclusive from inclusive, inclusive growth. That's a recommendation that I suspect is not in the committee report and not a change that I will be making. But of course I'll look at the report, I'll read it, I'll reflect upon it, and I'll take forward that which I think can assist our financial and economic strategy. Ivan McKee to be followed by Neil Bibby. Uh, thank you. Just to help the Labour Party understand this, can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that no money is actually lost through the Scottish Budget a result of any underspend? <laughs> Un uh, unlike years when the Labour Party was in office and handed money back to the Treasury, I can again confirm that not a single penny is lost to the Scottish Exchequer, the Scottish Finance Minister, the Scottish Budget as a consequence of the actions that I've taken. Neil Bibby to be followed by Gail Ross. Uh, today, when the SNP are in power, we have learned that the Derek Mackay has underspent the Scottish Budget for 2017 by close to half a billion pounds, a staggering figure. We often hear from SNP ministers taking pride in having balanced the book, but the reality is here that we have an SNP government who are mismanaging public finances and underfunding public services. Mr Mackay said earlier that the NHS and local services are getting enough cash, but he's well aware of the fact that a lack of resources is having on hospitals like the RH and councils like Renfrewshire who are having to roll out parking charges and cut grey bin collections due to a lack of funding. So how can Mr Mackay justify this major uh, underspend when services are being underfunded and what lessons will Mr Mackay learn uh, to manage our finances properly so our services get the resources they need when they need them? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Mr Bibby's scaremongering uh, as usual, um, so I, I take what he says with a pinch of salt. Uh, the underspend is a fraction of the overall fiscal uh, resource, and by law I can't overspend, so we have to manage our resources very carefully. Not a penny is lost to Scotland. Uh, the, over the course of the budget negotiations, we discussed how the underspend would be spent in the current financial year, and in addition um, to uh, all of that, as I say, the budget that the Labour Party voted against, that this government voted for, meant more money for local government, more money for the health service. Uh, it also included lifting the pay cap and many, many other 
interventions. And in relation to local government services, of course, Remshire Council under SNP leadership is delivering new and improved services. And I'm sure Neil Bibby will reflect on his negative uh, scaremongering once again. And briefly, Gail Ross. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what measures the Scottish Government is taking to support economic growth and to weather the economic disaster of being dragged out of the European Union? I think the Scottish Government has been able to express and had some considerable vindication from UK Government on the impact that Brexit will have uh, on Scotland's economy. But the actions we are taking include the most comprehensive package of business rates relief anywhere in the United Kingdom, a 64% increase in the economy portfolio, 70% increase in investment in business research, a new National Manufacturing Institute for Scotland, capitalisation of the National Investment Bank, £4 billion in infrastructure as well. Just some of the examples of how this government's investing in our economy to grow our economy and an inclusive way also. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. And members, that concludes our statement on the provisional outturn. We'll move on to the next item, which is a debate in the name of Angela Constance on World Refugee Day. We'll just take a few seconds for the Minister and members to change seats.